words from the Lord. We're looking for, anticipating, waiting, expecting your appointment. And I believe that your appointment is here. There's a few things I want to uh, explain to us just a little bit today from the Word of God. As the Holy Ghost would help me, just so that we can have a uh, sense of clarity about how we're going to retreat uh, and break whatever resistance the devil could lead us into our prophecy to manifesting. Okay, let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 21, and um, we'll hear the word of this one. I'm just going to do a part two of this. It's so, uh, so much that God is saying through one text. to make note of Zechariah 9 and 9 as well. Zechariah chapter 9, verse number 9. Make note of that. It is the prophetic precursor to Matthew 21. So we would have no Matthew 21 if there was no Zechariah 9 and 9. So there is something that was spoken before time in time that brings about what we're able to read and to study to embrace now. Matthew 21, verse number one. We're going to read verse number two as well. I'm going to read in the New King James Version. All right. Can you have it say, I got the word? The Bible says, now when they drew near Jerusalem, came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, go into the village opposite you. Immediately, you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Here is the emphatic part. Loose them and bring them to me without anyone's permission, without anyone's approval. Loose them, untie them, and bring them to me. Let's pray just one more. Father, I love you. Spirit, I thank you for the intimacy of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for that baptism in fire, that which enables mere men to stand in a holy place, to be holy oracles for the Holy God. I thank you for the enduring power of the Holy Spirit that has made me now a minister of the gospel and I'm asking you Lord that at this preaching hour you give me preaching power that you would hide me behind your glorious and rugged cross let no flesh glory in your sight and that flesh should be completely diminished and the spirit of God may be increased my father I'm asking you to possess me today let me preach today like a man who has been apprehended by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let my words be like fire and men's hearts like brass. Blaze in this room until there's transformation, deliverance, healing like never before. Let mighty deeds begin to break forth that there would be signs of Jesus Christ manifesting his ability, his mind, and his thoughts in this room. I'm asking you, Father, that by my grace that you would turn this room upside down that you would empty it of all doubt and fill it with all faith that these men might begin to walk out the very destiny of God for their life. I pray for divine and supernatural angels to assist me as we minister in war today on the behalf of Jesus and let there be like a plowing and a releasing of the glory of God into a field of men's hearts that the harvest come forth miracles, signs and wonders and faith in Jesus. 
Jesus mighty name may they be my mind for your thoughts my voice for your words my hand is for your anointing for your glory and for our good Lord in Jesus name it is so and so it is in Jesus and you may be seated amen I want to preach just a part two of what I started this morning and that is from the topic there's a prophecy on the loose there's a prophecy on the loose. There's a prophecy on the loose. And um, this is what I believe would be the culmination of this thought process today, uh, as the Lord would lead. Prophecy is the intentional revealing of what heaven has always known about you. And what prophecy allows to happen is for someone who is sensitive to the spirit of God to be able to grab a page out of the book in heaven concerning you. And when someone is able to grab that page and read it by virtue of the Holy Spirit, what they're doing is they're bringing to the forefront of your mind information that existed before you ever existed. The reason why it has to come to the forefront of your mind is because that which is in eternity will never show up in time until it first becomes a part of your conscious mind. Your conscious mind has to begin to process, to think, and to consider the ideas that God has concerning you. And once the conscious mind begins to process that, that is when faith is able to be activated through the spirit of God and we can see a manifestation of what God has spoken concerning you. So those of us who are prophetic people and are a part of a prophetic tribe and a prophetic family, then we are always trying to be sensitive to what God is saying so that after we hear God's voice speak, we can verbalize what God has said whether or not God is revealing it through sight or through hearing or through feeling or through a smell or through a taste or just through what you can sense or feel within yourself, however God decides to communicate it, it is our responsibility to communicate that to God what he has communicated to us. This is how you're going to get God to move for you. You're not going to get God to respond by just issuing complaints and gripes and issuing to him your own personal agenda or concerns or ideas. But the way that you're going to move heaven is when God has released an announcement that was scheduled in eternity over your life. And you begin to repeat that announcement back to him in faith. You're pulling it now out of eternity into real time. So it will not just be in the mind of God, it will actually show up in your life. And I think that this is the season of your life where you need to be able to experience that on a continual basis. You deserve to hear God speak something out of his mouth and then you agree with it with your mouth and then it shows up in your hands. Now, what I want you to do right now is to believe that what God's going to do is to dismiss the delay that happens in the realm of the spirit from when he says it, from when you agree with it, and from when it shows up in your hand. There's often something that shows up. Some demons try to start fighting you because every time God gives you a word, it's going to start a war. Let me explain why. Because the enemy does not want to see what God said to you come to pass. Here is why. He is committed to trying to make sure you don't believe God. And he knows you're going to struggle with believing God if something that was told to you hasn't happened yet and all of us get right there in the middle where that faith starts to get a little shaky little shaky just because it seemed like it ain't coming in the time that you thought it was going to come so what I'm believing God for you is he's going to put his hand over the enemy's mouth and stop him from accusing God to you making you feel like because God ain't showed up just yet that God has forgotten
forgotten about you or maybe that God has told a lie. But no, 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 no. His word says different. He is not a man that he should lie. Whatever he spoke, he is going to perform. So I want God to give you a season where hell shut up and heaven opens up. I want, I want somebody in this church right now to take a neighbor beside you and say, neighbor, you deserve a season where the enemy cannot irritate you. Yes, you do. You deserve a season where the enemy can't frustrate your thoughts. You deserve a season where you can go to sleep at night and wake up in faith knowing that God's going to perform for you. You deserve a season where you're not backtracking in your mind and fighting with your timelines and fighting with your due dates. You deserve a season where you have total confidence that he that shall come will come and he will not tarry. He's on his way and he's doing it in a hurry. Tell your neighbor he's doing it in a hurry. It won't, yeah, it won't be long now. It won't be long. It won't be. It, it won't be long now. It won't be long now. There, there are some intimidating factors that, that try to creep up between the time of your prophetic release and then the time of your manifestation. There are some things that try to intimidate you because oftentimes when God is really speaking, he's saying things that are so big that it is beyond even your understanding. It is beyond even your human comprehension. I don't know if you ever sat with God and he put something in your heart that was so big it made you scared. I don't, I don't know if you ever sat with God and he gave you a dream or an idea that was so huge it intimidated you. It made you look within yourself and wonder if you even had the capacity to carry this thing out. Sometimes God will place on you and give you assignments that you don't even think that you're worthy of and that's because he thinks more about you often than you think about yourself most of the time the thoughts that you have about yourself have been formulated by the thoughts that other people have had about you that they have shared with you before you could form thoughts about your own self here's what the enemy would do he will send people who will try to come and shape what you believe about you before you have come up with your own ideas of what you believe about you so that their statements can now become the law of your life. Here is why we need prophecy and why we need the word of God because oftentimes prophecy comes to correct the things that men have tried to disrupt. Prophecy comes to realign you to the mind of God and pull you into the reality of who you truly are because if you're not careful, life will try to trip you up in a way that you will lose yourself and you will be wandering and you will be going to and fro trying to rescue your own identity but when God is really trying to bring you into a place of manifestation he will begin to release the prophetic word that will remind you of your destiny that will show you your purpose that will reveal to you your calling and will not let you be comfortable where you are right now but push you and drive you to go further because there's more for you so your assignment is when God starts talking to pull yourself into complete faith to believe every single word that leads out of his mouth because if you can believe it you're going to be able to see it did not the bible say have faith in God and if you don't doubt in your heart you can even look to a mountain and speak to it and command that mountain to move what we need now is for what God said to get in your mouth and when your mouth begins to open up with God's word in it your entire situation all of your scenery and all of your surroundings are going to begin to match your prophetic word I prophesy right now to five of y'all in this room that you're going to be able to wake up and see your life look like what God said to you may you hey 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 may you get a fresh unction in your spirit right now and it don't always look like it look right now but there will be a moment coming to you where it's going to look like what God said. Yeah, yeah, we, we need the prophetic word. We need, we need the prophetic word. And so God accommodates himself so that he can communicate with us. 
God's system of communication is a prophetic system. He, he reveals, he unveils, he inspires. It's his nature for us to experience his wisdom. God wants you to know what he's thinking. He wants you to know what's on his mind about you. And he makes every accommodation for us possible. He will make himself known to you. Trust me, if God wants to talk to you, he is going to talk to you and you're going to know it's God talking ah yes here's the reality church uh, the reality is it is God's responsibility to make himself known to you you would never be able to perceive God by yourself on your own so if you're going to experience God at any point of your life it is going to happen by reason of the fact that God has decided to reveal himself to you this is a gift as a believer this is a gift as a human being because the God of the universe is so interested in my life that he wants me to see him for who he is and he believes that when my eyes come open to see him he will be all that will matter to me he believes that when my eyes come open to see him when he reveals himself to me that there would be like a firing off in my spirit of faith that will tell me that if I have seen him in his glory surely whatever he has told me he gonna do for me is minor compared to his own majesty ah can I tell y'all this if the God of the universe could hold the planet together for billions of years surely he can pay your mortgage if the God of the universe could keep stars in the sky shining and they have never lost their ability then surely he can heal you of sickness. If the God of the universe is able to keep the earth on its axis, it has never tilted or faltered at all, then surely that same God is able to save your family just like he promised. You've got evidence all around you that proves to you that God's word don't change. When you wake up in the morning, if the sun is shining, it means God's word ain't change. Uh, if the water is still flowing on the beach, it means God's word ain't changed. Uh, if grass can still grow in the spring, it means God's word ain't changed. Uh, if birds can keep chirping, it means God's word ain't changed. Uh, if the earth is still spinning on its axis, it means God's word has not changed. Uh, and if his word ain't changed, his mind ain't changed. Uh, and if his mind ain't changed, he gonna do what he told me he was gonna do. Do me a favor right quick and take your neighbor beside you. Say, neighbor, his mind has not changed. His mind, oh, that's a good place to praise God right there. You want to know why? Because we all have done some stuff that could have made God change his mind. Ah, but the reason why I love him so much is his mind was made up before you ever made any decision at all. He already chose what he was going to do for you. And even you can't disqualify yourself from what God wants you to have. If he wants you to have it, he will set up and schedule an appointment with you to ensure that you are ready to receive what he got planned for you. That's why I'm not worried about no qualifications because when it's my time, it's my time. When it's my moment, it's my moment. And can't nobody stop what God's going to do for me when it's my time. And once the ball starts rolling, it's going to pick up some more momentum ah! Lord I wish I had a prophetic church right now I wish I wish you would find your neighbor beside you say neighbor when it's your time it's your time uh-huh it's your time it's your time and I'm gonna make sure that when your moment comes I'll be right there to celebrate with you I'm not gonna be hating on you I'm not gonna be envious I'm not gonna be jealous I'm not going to be wondering what you did to get it. I'm not going to be asking no questions about how you received it. I'm just going to praise God with you because I know if you got it, it's because he wants you to have it. Y'all know if he blessed you with it, it's because he wants you to have it. And if God wants it for you, then I want it for you too. I love that for you. Do me a favor, neighbor. I love that for you. I love that. 
Let me hurry. Let me hurry on. I gotta, I gotta get to. I'm getting to my text today. I promise you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's when it's my time. It's just my time. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And 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 when it gets here, watch this. When it gets here, uh, I want you to know that I will not be apologizing for how blessed I'm about to be, y'all. I, I, I won't be making no concessions for anybody's feelings because I remember that when my tears were coming down my face, it was nobody that had helped me wipe them junk. So 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 when God starts to bless me real big, I'm not gonna get and act real false, humble, like I don't deserve to be where I am. No, no, no. I worked to get here. Y'all don't want to say that. I paid a price to be this happy. Y'all know I had to go through some hell to get to this place. And since I'm here now, I'm so committed to staying here, I'm going to fight to preserve my peace. I wish a devil would. Lord, let me find me a church. I wish a devil would try and pull me out of the place I fought so hard to get to. It took too many tears, too much prayer, too much intercession, too much fasting, too much submission, too much obedience to get to where I am right now. So I I want God the same way you stretch that suffering, stretch this success. I want to talk. Let me fire me somebody. Say, neighbor, God's going to stretch my success. As a matter of a fact, if y'all can find y'all one praise beside you, I'm going to let you prophesy to them and tell them, say, neighbor, as a matter of a fact, God's going to give you success for at least a thousand times longer than you had to suffer. Now, if your neighbor ain't praising God, you can't trust him. Find you somebody with a word in their belly and a praise in their mouth. Because I guarantee you right now, the word of God is still true. And his, hey, his word, it endures forever. He going to let me... He gonna let me succeed longer than I had to suffer, uh, and and if you and if you be honest, the suffering wasn't for no long time anyway. Y'all don't wanna say nothing. It just felt long because you was there alone. Y'all don't wanna. I'm going to say it again. The suffering wasn't really for a long time anyway. It just felt long because you were there alone. Ah, yeah. But what's going to happen is God's getting ready to send you somebody. Lord, let me. I'm going. I'm, I'm, I'm. Can I fast forward and rewind? Y'all don't mind if I do it. I'm, can I fast forward and rewind? Because notice by the time we get to our text, uh, we know a donkey is loose, but he don't get loose by himself. God sent somebody and said, God. Go over there, and I want you to set them free, which means he's going to send somebody that's got every key that you need to open the door that you've been waiting on. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now, but I prophesy to five of y'all who will praise God. God's going to send you at least two people who are going to make your whole life turn all the way around. Thank y'all for running. I appreciate y'all. Uh, let me find me about five jumpers in the building who will find your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's going to send me two people. I don't, I don't know where they coming from. I don't know. I'm two people away from being a millionaire. I'm two people away from my business taking off. I'm two people away from my property, from my rent, from my, from my new house. I'm two people away. All I need is two connections. Why two, apostle? Because your Bible said... Where two, oh, y'all read that thing. Where two or three, he gonna send me two. And I'm gonna make three. Yes, I am. Uh, it's the, yeah, that's right. It's the power. It's the power of agreement. Uh, hallelujah. I know you had 20 people that didn't believe it. I know you had you had 35 people who said it was never going to happen. I know you had 40 folk who said you were crazy for believing it. I know you had 15 family members who told you you can't have that, but God's going to send you two strangers. Lord, they talk. Uh, okay, some of y'all are praying. He'll send you. I tell y'all what, when your family and your friends won't support you, God will send you strangers uh, who will come and believe in you more than your own people will that's why hey, hey 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 that's why i have no toxic loyalty because once god bless me you ain't believe in this you're the main one who said god couldn't do it so when my fruit come in don't you ask me for none y'all don't want to say nothing up in here because you ain't believing but your neighbor say hey neighbor say neighbor i'm not one of them and i believe god with you however big your dream is i believe god with you However massive that thing is, I believe God with you. And I want God to untie your miracle 
so that your season can begin. It's your time now. It's Come on, Cunningham, get to the text. All right, y'all. Y'all sit, 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 sit. Here I come. Here I, here I come. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm, I just had to fast forward and rewind. I'll, I'll be back to it in a minute. On your way down to your neighbor beside you, sit, neighbor, I know God's going to do it for you. I know God's going to do it for you. I know. I know he's going to do it for you. I know he is. I know he is. I know it. I know it. I know it. I'm convinced of it. I'm fully persuaded. I totally believe God's going to do it for you. I'm excited for you. I'm ready to see. Uh, Y'all sitting beside the wrong person. I'm ready to see you blessed. I done saw you walk in this church crying. I had no idea what was wrong with you. But I am ready to see you smiling from ear to ear. I want to see all ten of your teeth. I can't wait till God do something miraculous for you. He going to blow your mind. And when God blow your mind, watch me praise him like he blew my mind. You want to know why? Because if God is blessing my neighbor, he's in the neighborhood. Yep, y'all be seated. He, he right here. He in the neighborhood. Yes, hallelujah. Okay. Uh -huh. We are, we are, we are a prophetic people. That's, that's why we respond, we respond in the now to what God is saying. We respond in the now. We, we, we're discipled to do this. This is not, this is not some church activity. This is prophetic response. Because when God is speaking, when God is talking, there is a response that is necessary. There is, there is a way we're supposed to respond and react to what God is saying. And I want you to know that because prophecy is something that is released, oftentimes it is to personal people. It is individual. But there are times where the gift of prophecy begins to heal hit a building or a space as a result of the supply of the Holy Ghost. And when God starts talking to a group of people, he's trying to let his word land on a faith location. <laughs> Which means the word of God being released from God's mouth is circling the room like a plane circling a landing strip. Trying to find out where is the one that believes me and can I land this prophetic word on their heart. The moment God can detect faith, woo, ha, he drops a blessing. I wish I had a church. The moment that God can detect that you believe him, uh, he lands the miracle right on your runway. Uh, and there are some of y'all that's been waiting for your ship to come in. Ha, ha, ha. You've been waiting on your time to be blessed. Guess what? Uh, I see in the realm of the spirit the angel saying, yep, uh, yep, uh, you've been cleared for landing. I feel like, Lord, I'm Yeah, it's something, it's something. Y'all sit, sit, here I come. It's, it's something, it's something that we do by faith. We have faith, so we praise him in response. We, we rejoice in response. That's what Zechariah 9 and 9 said. It said, rejoice greatly. It said, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. It said, it said, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Why? Because your king is coming. Uh, well, I told y'all, make note of Zechariah 9 and 9. That's what it says. It says, it says, rejoice greatly, and then it says, shout and you should be doing the both of these because your king is coming your king mm -hmm. Lord, I wish I had time. Your king is coming. Your king is coming. Zechariah specifically says prophetically, J. Mark, he says, your king is coming and he's riding on a donkey. He's riding on a donkey and a coat. Now, this might not sound exciting to you because there are some people who don't read their Bible enough to know why this is exciting. And there are those who were expecting their king to come riding on a horse because if he's riding on a horse, he looks more powerful. Uh -huh. But the implication of old Bible history tells me that if a king is riding on a horse, he's coming to make war. But if a king is riding on a donkey, he's coming to make peace. I, I wish I had somebody in here I could prophesy to and tell y'all that your king is coming uh, and he's coming on the back of a donkey, which means what? Uh, ain't gonna be no more warfare. It's your season for peace. I wish I could... I got one witness. I got two witnesses. I got three back there, four or five. Do me a favor. Say, hey, neighbor, I've been in enough fights already. I want my king to bring me some peace. 
I've been wrestling in my mind, in my marriage, in my money, in my business, in my job. I'm sick of fighting. But behold, your king is coming. And he's going to bring some peace with him. Did, did the Bible not say that he is the wonderful counselor? Mighty God, everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Yes, y'all sit, sit, tell your neighbor beside you, peace, peace, peace. I, I prophesy peace over you. I, I prophesy peace over you. Peace. Uh, some of them ain't receiving that thing. I prophesy peace over you. I command you to have peace at home. I, I command you to have peace on your job. I, I command you to have peace in your body. I don't know what this thing is that's afflicting you, causing you pain, got you bleeding, got you hurting at night. I command peace in your body. Hey, peace for your children, peace for your grandchildren, peace over your business, peace, peace, peace over your career, peace in your church. Oh, peace in your ministry. I want the peace of God. Peace that does surpass all under all understanding. Peace, peace. Y'all sit down. Peace, peace, peace. That's, that's what it means when he's riding on the back of a donkey. It means, Josh, he's coming to release peace. Mama, mama, die. This is also what blessed me. I found out according to 1 Samuel 16 and 20 that donkeys were also used interchangeably with camels. Lord, y'all don't, y'all gonna miss it. Donkeys were also used interchangeably with camels. Sometimes great men would ride camels and sometimes great men would ride donkeys but both donkeys and camels were meant to carry blessings they would put bread and wine and corn and raisins on the back of the donkey and walk into the city with all the blessings on the back of the donkey I know we said uh, last year the camels were coming, but maybe I want camels and donkeys too. Uh, do me a favor and find your name. I want all of it. I want, I'll tell God to send me every animal that can carry my miracle. Hello, send me every vehicle that can bring my blessing to me. I put it on the back of my donkey and let that thing ride me into uh, the next season of my life. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what happened. That's what happened. Jesus, Jesus is trying to fulfill a prophetic thing. This is prophetic. It, it was not just some act of fate. Uh, it, it, was, it, it wasn't just some coincidence or decision. This was God. Jesus was trying to fulfill something prophetic. Everything Jesus does is prophetic. Every part of his life is prophetic. From the very moment he was born, uh, he was prophetic. He was born in a feeding trough. Why was the man born in a manger? Why? He was born outside in a feeding trough for all of creation to come and to witness him. Why? Because the Bible tells us that he is the bread of life. Bread is meant to be eaten. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? So they laid that loaf of bread, that little baby Jesus, they laid him in that manger to prophesy that all of creation is going to feed off of him. Uh, his hope his whole life was prophetic and because he is the bread of life watch this the bread of life was born in a place called Bethlehem you know what Bethlehem means Beth means house Leham means of bread the bread of life was born in the house of bread his whole life was prophetic are y'all understand when he was 12 years old he was sitting in a temple and he was teaching doctors and scribes at 12 why at 12 because one day he would call 12 and teach those 12 to turn the whole world up his whole life was his whole life was prophetic everything he did was on purpose yes y'all sit sit everything he did was for the purpose of fulfilling a prophecy Jesus Christ is sitting with 5,000 men not including women and children 5,000 hungry men he takes two fish five loaves of bread ah Jesus lifts them up 
and then he blesses them and breaks it and then gives it to the people to eat. Why? Because this thing is prophetic. Why five loaves? Because five represents grace. Those five loaves of bread are the symbols of the five grains in which God would give the church known as the fivefold ministry. Apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, and teacher. Five loaves of bread that only come from one loaf. The one loaf Jesus breaks himself up into five loaves to feed all of his children. Everything he did I don't have time to do all of it. Everything he did was prophetic. Yep, everything he did was prophetic. Okay, let me give y'all one more. Can you take one more? Uh, he was on a boat one day sleeping. I know it was crazy. The storm was raging. Waters were, were all over the place. Winds are blowing. It's raining. It looks like the boat is going to be destroyed. Here is Jesus at the bottom of the ship and he's sleep. Why is this man sleep on this boat when it looks like it's going to flood? You want to know why? Because uh, there was a flood in the book of Genesis uh, a man named Noah was told to build an ark uh, that same ark he built was made out of wood and that wood became the salvation of the people who were in the boat uh, Jesus now gets in another boat uh, made out of wood uh, and like any savior would he falls asleep why because one day on Calvary hanging on some wood uh, he's going to fall asleep uh, but if he falls asleep on the wood huh? he gonna wake up eventually huh? and tell everybody on the boat huh? peace huh? be still I need you to find your neighbor neighbor uh, everything he does is perfect uh, yes uh, uh, nah, he went to sleep only to wake up and save me uh, uh, that's everything he went to sleep only to wake up and save me everything everything he does is prophetic so now here he is uh, and he's coming through this place and called Beth Page Bethany and he's coming through here he says alright now it's time for my triumphant entry but I can't go in unless I have a donkey because uh, Zechariah prophesied that I was coming riding on a donkey watch this and on a coat the coat is the child of the donkey. The donkey is considered the mother, uh, or what the Bible would say, a she ass. The coat is the firstborn of that mother donkey. He comes in with both of them. Lord, I would I, why both of them? I'm gonna tell y'all why. One of them uh, has been ridden on before by others. Uh, the baby has never been ridden on by anybody, which means one of them represents sin. One of them represents iniquity. One of them represents that which all men have transgressed and trespassed. While the other one represents innocence, uh, represents purity, represents being clean, uh, represents being blameless. He is uh, the one who was blameless, uh, who has come to carry the sins uh, and the trespasses of all of us. So I need a donkey uh, that's been dirty. Uh, and a donkey that's been clean. And I'm going to take the clean thing. And the dirty thing. And both of them going to Calvary with me. And when I get on Calvary's mountain. My clean life is going to clean up that dirty life. I got to hurry up. Ah, yeah, everything he does is prophetic. Everything he does is prophetic. Not, not just that, y'all. Not just clean and unclean, but, but the two donkeys also represent Jews and Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Because the Jews uh, were the first ones that he chose. Uh, they were the ones who were called to be the children, uh, the children of God. Uh, he chose them as his own personal nation. And he came to redeem them first. Uh, the Gentiles were all those uh, who have been ostracized from the family of the Jews. Uh, but Jesus comes and says, yeah, I'm going to save the Jews. Uh, but the Jews uh, are the same ones who are going to kill me. Uh, so as a result, uh, I'm going to engraft y'all in. Uh, you don't deserve it, but I'm going to engraft you into the same tree that they are a part of. Uh, and so now because I came to save them, uh, I'm going to save all of y'all too. Uh, uh, this was perfect.
prophetic what he was doing. Jesus is riding now in on the donkeys. But before he's able to do this, there's one problem. We have one problem, one problem. We know the donkeys are prophetic. I'm hurrying up. We know that these donkeys were meant to fulfill the prophecy of Zechariah 9 and 9. We know that these donkeys were chosen, which means obviously these two donkeys had to be born at the perfect time for Jesus to be able to find him. Oh my God. Obviously these donkeys had to be born in the perfect dispensation just so Jesus could ride on these two. There had been several donkeys before these. Woo! There have been possibly millions of donkeys before these. But these ones right here were born for such a time as this. No wonder why these two who have been separated for only one special use. Men have tied them up. Lord, I feel like talking to y'all. Because when men look at them, men say, y'all ain't usable. But men didn't know that what you tied up, you were only reserving it for him. You thought you were hurting me, but you were getting me ready for the best ride of my life. Uh, some of y'all ain't being honest in here. Have you ever been tied up, mama say? Uh, won't people tie you up? Come on here. Won't demons tie you up? Won't, won't pressure tie you up? Won't life tie you up? Won't depression tie you up? My God. Have you ever been tied to anxiety? ever been tired to the spirit of infirmity you get well one week and then you're sick the next week with something different have you ever been tied huh, to emotions you couldn't control y'all don't want to be honest have you ever been tired to perversion and tied to lust you couldn't shake it huh? it seemed like I only could go so far and then something would yank me right back huh, to my old cycle I've been tired to some stuff tied huh, to bad relationships tied huh, to toxic people tied to trauma huh? tied to childhood abuse huh? tied to, Bahasha, to addiction huh? tied to pain from my family tied to betrayal and disloyalty huh? tied to distrust people huh? have never been good to me huh? and I've been nothing but good to them tied huh? ah, to distrust tied to fear Woo, look at me all being quiet now have you ever been tied huh? to pornography tied to sex, uh, tied to alcohol, tied to cigarettes, uh, tied to liquor, Woo! Uh, tired, tired, uh, trying to get free, uh, but you can't get free, uh, but Jesus said, uh, I've been seeing you all the time, uh, and I watched you tied up, uh, and I know they said you ain't usable, and they said you ain't worth nothing, and they said you weren't fit to live, uh, but I got different plans for you, uh, and I see you tied up, uh, but I came today uh, to untie you. Uh, uh, do my, thank you, sir. Do me a favor and find y'all somebody beside you and say, neighbor, the Lord came today to untie you. Hello, I'm saying, neighbor, I don't know what you've been tied to, but as of right now, I hear the Holy Ghost saying, he's about to loose you and bring you directly to him. I have no idea, I have no idea how long the donkey had been tied up. In my mind, I believe he was possibly tied huh, to some sort of wooden post. Maybe he was tied to a fence. Maybe he was tied to a gate. Maybe he was tied to a water fountain. I don't know. But in my mind, I believe he was possibly tied to a wooden post. Ain't this thing prophetic, y'all? That Jesus would ride on a donkey that's been tied to some wood. The donkey has been tied to wood. And he on his way to be nailed to some wood. Ain't that thing prophetic? But he said, I got no choice but to loose you and let you go. Because the same way the cross couldn't hold me, this cycle can't hold you. Find you a neighbor and say, neighbor, 
I don't know what it is that's been trying to control your movements. But I hear the Lord say, you're about to be untied and you're about to be loose. Can I give y'all a prophecy right quick? Can I tell y'all today, this was not the first time that Jesus said, loose them and let them go. No, it ain't. But the first time I remember where he says, loose them is when his friend Lazarus had died and he was laid up in the grave stinking for four days and they told Jesus he's dead now ain't nothing to do now but had you been here our brother wouldn't have died and he told them you were hoping I would prevent the problem but I came today to resurrect the problem because I am the resurrection and the life he told Lazarus Lazarus come forth Bible said Lazarus came hopping out that grave leaping out that grave and when they saw Lazarus he was still bound still tied up just like that donkey, huh? still tied up. Huh? His name had been called, huh? but he was still tied up. Huh? And that's how some of y'all have been. Huh? God called your name. He called your name, gave you a calling, and gave you a grace. Huh? But there's some things huh? you are still tied up in. Huh? But then Jesus said huh? to those people who were watching, huh? don't just stand there and watch the man be bound. Don't just stand there and watch the man struggle. You watch them die and you're going to stand there and watch him struggle and he back to life again. No, 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 no. I command you. Go assist him. Loose him and let him do me a favor and find your neighbor and say, neighbor, you've been in this condition for long enough. But God's about uh, to send somebody that's going to loose you uh, and let you go. Uh, it's time. It's time uh, for you to go free. Uh, Lord, let me close this. Uh, and I'm out of here now. Uh, give it like two more minutes. Uh, and I'm going to come get you, Timmy. Uh, I got to give you all uh, the last part. Uh, on my text today uh, because I told you that there's uh, a prophecy uh, on the loose uh, which means uh, the donkey was not just an instrument to fulfill prophecy but the donkey uh, was a prophecy uh, the same way Zechariah mentioned the king uh, Zechariah mentioned that donkey and the donkey huh, was prepared for that moment huh? I want to prophesy huh, to five of y'all who will give God the glory huh? you don't just have huh, a prophecy huh? you are huh, a prophecy and I command you huh, in the name of Jesus huh, to be loose huh, and be set free grab somebody I'm out of here now. Grab somebody. Grab, uh, grab, grab somebody and send me. Uh, I'm a sign to you uh, to get you free. Hell, I'm saying, neighbor, I'm a sign to you to break you out of this. I'm a sign to you to untie you. You've been limited. You've been restricted. You've been held back. You've been tied down. You've been bound with sickness. Bound with disease. Bound with frustration. Bound with pain. Bound with loneliness. But in the name of the Lord Jesus, I command you, go free, go free. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find somebody uh, that's ready to run, baby, uh, to be set free. Uh, grab that neighbor, rock him and shake him. Shake him and rock him. Uh, rock him and shake him. Shake him and rock him. Rock him and shake him. Shake him and rock him. Rock him, shake him. Shake him and rock him. I said, come on, let's go. 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 Ask him where we're going. Away from here. Anywhere but here. Anywhere but this place. We're out of here. Out of depression. Out of fear. Out of suffering. Out of pain. We're out of here. And if you're praising, I believe God, he's about to take us high. Tell somebody, I'm ready now. I've been here long enough, but I'm ready now. It's been hard on me. It's been rough on me. I've been tired to people's opinions. I've been tired to their thoughts about me. I've been tired to my past, but I feel like uh, it's my season uh, to run free now. And the enemy that had me down won't hold me no longer. I'm free, uh, praise the Lord. Uh, I'm free, uh, no longer by. No more chains uh, holding me. Uh, my soul is resting uh, and a blessing. Uh, praise him. Praise him. Yeah. Praise him. Uh, I've been set free. And I prophesy not just me, but everything connected to me uh, is going to be untied to find somebody and say neighbor everything tied to you is going free huh? right now I command every chain to be broken in the name of Jesus and if you praise him I believe God he's about to take you huh? Hi, tell somebody, let's go a little bit higher. Y'all ain't got the right neighbor. Tell them there's a prophecy on the loose. There's a miracle on the loose. There's a healing on the loose. There's a millionaire on the loose. There's a dunamite on the loose. There's a miracle worker on the loose. There's a dreamer on the loose. There's an apostle on the loose. There's a family on the loose. There's a prophetess on the loose. There's a business on the loose. There's withdrawals on the loose. There's deposits on the loose. There's vision boards on the loose. There's a church in Memphis called TG that's on the loose. Tell somebody, I saw the night you tried to put me in, but today I feel like the Holy Ghost is breaking me out. Leave your seat. I feel like preaching, but y'all ain't screaming at me. Leave your seat. Tell somebody we've been loose. We've been loose. So since we've been loose, I dare you to open up your mouth and prophesy what you need. God to loose, tell your neighbor, I, I need God to loose my clientele, loose my money, 
Loose my business. Loose my supporters. Loose my contracts. Loose my promotion. Loose my raise. Loose my healing. Loose my deliverance. Loose my miracle. Loose my son. Loose my mama. Loose my whole church. Loose me. Tell somebody I need God to loose me. And that's why I'm a praise him like I'm free. I'm a rejoice like I'm free. I'm a leap like I'm free. And I believe if you shout God, he's about to take us yeah, yeah, yeah. Grab your name. I'm out of here, Kendrick. Ha. Grab your name ha. one more time and say, Nate, can I prophesy ha. over your future? Say, can I prophesy ha. over your destiny? Say, Nate, your word is. No more restrictions, no more restrictions, no more limits. I command you, break the limits, break the records, break the limits, break the records, break the limits, break the records. It's never been done before, it's never been seen before, but you're about to break the limits. And break the records. They ain't ready for what God's are going to do for you. But the next time that they see you, you won't be by yourself. They're going to see Jesus on your back. Here I come, and I'm ready now. I cry for this. I suffer for this. I went through for this. But here I come. And I'm carrying Jesus. I'm carrying a mantle. I'm carrying a grace on me. I'm carrying an anointing. I'm carrying a new level. Right on, King Jesus. Right on. No man hinder you. Right on, King Jesus. No man can hinder you. It's my season. It's my time. It's my moment. If you believe it, throw your head back, open your mouth, and shout, 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 shout. I need five of y'all that know what it felt to be bound to praise God right now for being loose. Untie me. Untie me, untie me, untie me, untie me. History says, history says that when a donkey has never been ridden before, that that is the most dangerous type to try and ride. Because they ain't used to being ridden. And they are taught that before you can ride the donkey, you have to break them. 
But there's a donkey sitting here that's never been rode on before. And Jesus didn't have to break him to ride him. But here's why. Jesus didn't have to break him because being tied up for so long had already broke him. So I believe in the donkey's mind, I don't care who get me off of this chain, but whoever set me free, I'm following it. And when Jesus showed up, and when Jesus showed up, and when Jesus showed up, the word is, I follow Jesus. He set me free. He loosed my chains. He said, he loosed, he loosed my chains. I owe him my life. He brought me out. He loosed me. I need five of y'all to praise God right now that Jesus is the one that sent me. Because he set me free. I owe him my life. Jesus has made me free. I said, Jesus has made me free. When they was talking about Jesus, they was also talking about the donkey. Which means I was mentioned before I was manifested. There were already discussions about me before my mama had me. So, I don't just have a prophecy, I am the prophecy. I wouldn't dare to hear it, but I believe that before I was born, somebody prophesied a preacher gonna come through this family, here I am. See y'all, I just believe that before you was born, it was prophesied. There's gonna be a millionaire in this family, and here you are. Before you was born, it was prophesied. They're going to be a college graduate in this family, and here you are. Before you was born, it was prophesied. There are going to be some married couples that's going to change this whole bloodline, and here you are. You are the prophet. Praise the Lord.
Yeah. 